Hey guys, I'm just going to walk you through uh, my chapter 14 assignment on mastering really quick. Uh, for this assignment, I did use the jazz example that was found in the resources with the book there. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through what effects I used on some of the instruments, some of the mixing that I did, and then finally uh, my mastering chain that I had. Um, so I'm going to unfold these uh, groups here really quick. So you can see I have the group with the drums um, and the bass right here. So on the bass, I got just the compressor, the EQ, which I got rid of all the highs, some of the high mids, and just kept that around like 100 hertz there. Um, and then I also used this uh, CLA bass plugin here, which does some extra compression and some extra EQ um, and just adds a, an extra little feel, kind of like an amp would do with it. Um, on the snare drum top, I have the EQ, kind of took out some of the highs um, and the pre presence area there to leave room for uh, the lead parts like the guitar and the saxophone, but kept some of the low mids for the, the pop of the snare. And then I used this compressor here as well. The the bottom of the snare drum I used uh, more for the actual sound of the snares, the um, the chains there on the bottom. And uh, so I used the high end and got rid of all the lows. And then I put this gate on too and a compressor. I used the gate for multiple instruments, well, multiple drums. Um, I used it on the toms especially because the toms only play at a few specific spots. So basically what it's doing is just getting rid of all the extra sounds when the toms are not being played because there was a lot of bleed from the mics. Um, so yeah, I used these gates here, which were really helpful to, to make it come through a little more clear. I tried it on a couple of the drums, didn't come out the way I liked it, so I just uh, deactivated it. Um, the overheads here, I have an EQ, um, bringing out some of the highs so you can hear the cymbals nice and, you know, the, the real high end of the cymbals there. Um, EQ'd out some of the presence like in the main uh, middle area, but kind of left the rest of it open because that's supposed to pick up the whole kit as well. Um, Okay, let's take a look at these instruments, the lead ones. So the guitar here, put a few different things on. It already had this filter on. I used the EQ to bring some presence out around 2, 2, 3K. Um, got rid of all the low end to leave that clear for the bass and the, and the kick drum. Got rid of some of the highs as well. Um, so more of the high mids we have and then the, the presence area there. Also have the compressor. And then one extra thing I put on was this delay. I really like using the super tap delay. Um, so I used three, uh, three different delay signals that are coming through at different times. And then I always like using this uh, low pass filter on it as well and getting rid of like the presence area. So it cuts off at 1K so that the, the delay signals aren't overpowering. Um, the saxophone did some EQ and got rid of the lows, brought in some high mids, but I EQ'd it at a different spot than where the guitar was at so that it would come out from the guitar because they're both kind of the lead parts. So you want to hear those distinctly. Um, and then I also use a compressor and then I use this to get rid of some of the noise, this multiband compressor here. Uh, to get rid of some of the extra hissing noise that you can hear. Um, I also sent the saxophone saxophone through Send A, which I used a concert hall reverb there for. Um, okay, let's take a look at the mastering chain. So on the mastering, I have the glue compressor first, medium attack, medium release, ratio is four to one, four comes in, one goes out. Um, the threshold set to minus 14, make up a four dB uh, to kind of equal that out. And then I have the EQ second. I did play around with this and move the EQ first before the compressor. I, for some reason, I like the way it sounded better with the compressor here and the EQ second and then limiter next. And I actually, I have my multiband after this limiter and then I have an additional limiter here, which is letting it only make it out to um, minus 0.5 dB so it doesn't hit the ceiling of uh, zero. Um, so yeah, again, I did play around with moving these around. And when I, when I EQ and, and compress on instruments, a lot of times I do... The reverse of that where i'll have like here let me go to the guitar and i'll show you usually like with the guitar i have my eq first and then the compressor um and the reason i do that is because i want to get rid of those frequencies that i don't want to hear before i compress the whole signal and bring all those levels up um but so i i already did all that though on the instruments so then i guess once i got to the master track i liked the sound of compressing all those eqs that i already did and then adding an additional master eq which is kind of in this smiley shaped face here um smiley face shape so it has some of the low end coming out the mids kind of cut and then the high end coming out too uh to get rid of some of the muddiness there in the middle um all right so with all that said i'll i'll go ahead and play it for you guys and and let you hear it i hope you enjoy it i did work most of the time here in session view um arrangement view i didn't really use a whole lot other than uh trimming up the very beginning of the song uh where they were like talking and counting and like just kind of some noise was there okay so i'm gonna go ahead and play it for you a little bit so you can get a feel for how it turned out. 